Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. My name is Kevin Nakagawa and I'm the designer of the Stampscapes line. Um, I've been asked over these past couple months a few times about um, cutting out unmounted stamps. And this is going to be really some really basic information right here. And, but for people that are just getting into kind of the usage of unmounted stamps, meaning um, kind of a temporary mounting method with usually uh, acrylic blocks, um, you know how how do they how should they go about utilizing their stamps and how how should they cut them out you know what kind of scissors do I use and so forth so I'll just do a quick uh, demonstration of uh, what I use um, let's see where should I start uh, first of all the acrylic blocks come in you know a variety of different sizes and uh, a lot of people use this you know these acrylic blocks um, some people like them because they're see through. And you can, you know, sometimes for positioning, you know, it's easier to see where that, you know, they're going to place that stamp. Um, when it comes to a wood block, you know, there's usually some kind of um, image on the top for registration. And I've been using that for the most part for the last 20 years. And I just started using kind of a, you know, the temporary mounting method with uh, the, our 2012 release of stamps. And um, I don't know, I like both methods. Uh, one method of the temporary mounts is that, you know, storage isn't at a premium, you know. You can get a lot of stamps into, you know, a three ring binder type of thing or whatever storage method that people use. Um, okay, now on my acrylic block, I have this thing called tack and peel. Uh, tack N peel with an N in the middle. And uh, what it is is this thin sheet of rubber. It's almost like a, I would say it's a little bit thicker than a 1 16th inch piece of rubber. So there's a little bit of cushion to it and it has this um, tackiness to it. I mean, you know, when I put my hand to it, it feels kind of sticky. Although, you know, if you put a stamp on here and stamp it, it's not, and you peel it off, it's not going to leave any residue on here. Now, after a while, this starts collecting a little bit of dust and whatnot, so you're just supposed to, you know, put it under um, running water, rinse it off. Don't dab it with, like, a paper towel or something, otherwise it's going to pick up all that lint and fuzz um, from those, and it's going to be tacky anymore, so just let it air dry, and it's supposed to be good to go again. All right, this is the sheet that comes on there. You just kind of, you know, uh, cut out your tack and peel to size of whatever block you're using keep the um, plastic protective sheet that comes with it and just put that back on there when you're not using it. Otherwise, I've made the mistake of I've had this kind of sitting out like that and I've, you know, a piece of paper goes on there or something like that and that thing just sticks like crazy to it. So uh, kind of watch out for that. Another method that people do is they take their unmounted stamps and they put on this um, cling foam. Uh, it's a piece of uh, foam and it has a permanent adhesive that sticks to the rubber side of the um, image and it has the magnetic properties that stick to um, like an acrylic block or anything uh, kind of flat and uh, solid. Uh, you wouldn't use the cling foam you know with the tack and peel you don't need it because the cling foam is already clingy so you can stick it to uh, you know uh, your acrylic block and have some kind of storage method, usually it's some kind of plastic sheet. Okay, now let's get into the cutting of imagery. Um, you want to have a good pair of scissors, you know, even a pair of Fiskars works fine too, but if you're going to do a lot of, if you find that you like this kind of method of uh, stamp usage, you know, in terms of the temporary block uh, mounting method, I would recommend, and you're going to, you know, and if you're going to get a lot of um, stamps like that and be cutting them out yourself, I'd recommend a pair of good shears of some sort. Uh, one of the brands that people tend to like are called Kai, K-A-I, and uh, they're really good steel. You can use them for years and years and years. I've had these ones, you know, we've used in uh, at Stampscapes for years, and I've had them sharpened, you know, time and time again, maybe sometimes up to, I don't know, a professional sharpening, maybe seven, eight times, and, uh, you know, they're still good to go. So, anyway... Um, this sheet of rubber is this sheet of stamps right here. It's from a 2012 release. 
and let's just get into this right now. Um, usually when I'm cutting out images, instead of cutting out the entire, you know, image like this, you know, really close and holding this big sheet, I usually just give it a rough cut um, like this. And I do my finer cuts after that. Now, what you want to do with unmounted rubber is you want to give it a nice close trim, okay? You, of course, don't want to trim into the image, but get as close as you can, especially with um, rubber only. If you're working with a, a cling foam that's about an eighth of an inch, you just want to be careful that you don't undercut. You want to cut at a nice straight angle, okay? Not like that. Because what happens if you undercut your image, there's no cushion in back of the image portion, the raised portion of the stamp, so when you go to stamp it out, it might not put enough pressure on those various areas that could potentially be undercut, so. But when it comes to just bare rubber, you know, get as close as you can. And when you do that, now let's see, if I had all this excess rubber outside, on the outside, when you're inking these up, you know, I would, you know, put it on my temporary mounting system, and then when I start inking this up, inevitably, if there's too much of this excess rubber out here, it's going to pick up some of that ink from your pad, and then when you go to print it sometime, you know, like that, sometimes that area will print on your page. So, you want to take that, and you want to cut it off. All right. So get a nice close trim, and those ones are good to go. Let's get into an image that has a little bit more, you know, curves and, you know, in and out areas, like something like one of these um, uh, Spanish moss stamps. <clears throat> okay. Now, we don't need to worry about getting into, like, these really super tight areas, like right in there, okay? But these areas like this, you might want to cut out, you know, just because, again, we don't want those areas to print out when I'm cutting. I'm usually starting right in this little section right here, closest to uh, the joint. I figure it's the, I have the most control over it. And let's get into here. With this scissor right here, scissor technique, I'm usually going like this. I'm not going like this, you know, around with my hand like that. I don't feel that's comfortable, so I do the uh, most of the turning with my off hand, okay? And remember, rubber is flexible, so don't be afraid to bend the rubber. And then you can get right in there like that, okay? So it's better than going snip, 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 snip. All right, you can get kind of a little bit more continuous cuts like that. And again, be careful not to trim into your image area, okay? See this, how I'm really bending the rubber around. Don't be afraid to bend it, it'll spring right back. little areas like right in here. Don't even worry about those because that area in there is going to be supported. So I mean when you go to print it out that area in there is not going to you know give you any problems. Okay. Like that. Um, now if you're using um, like cling foam uh, mounting material Inevitably, you're going to get the adhesive from the permanent adhesive that sticks to from foam to rubber. It's going to start gumming up on your scissors. So what I have is something like a uh, what is that orange? Uh, I forgot the name of that uh, 
thing that removes adhesive, but put that on a paper towel and just take it right off. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to think of that product as soon as I turn this camera off. But anyways, you can see where this is kind of uh, moving right in and out of these um, little tighter areas. It looks like this one is actually the Spanish moss left, but you can kind of see right here. You know, we don't really need to cut that out. I mean, you could get in there and cut these areas out, like right in here if you wanted to, but you really don't need to. So just kind of get in there as close as you can, and those areas will never print out on you. You know, you only have to do this thing once, so, uh, you know, I take time to, you know, give a nice close trim. And, uh, you know, from then on, the you know, the life of the stamp, it'll never give you any problems as far as over-inking and stamping out on the perimeter like that. So if you do find an area that does start to print out, then just get in there and just trim it out. And again, it's, it's pretty easy. I know it's a lot easier with just the rubber die, you know, and the tack and peel type of thing, but uh, some people like the cling mount because they like that extra cushioning adhesive. This block is a little bit small for this stamp right here, but you can kind of see how it works. Okay, so anyways, I hope that kind of answers some questions there as far as how to trim your stamps and, you know, some of the different methods. I don't happen to have any of that cling foam uh, here with me, but what you would do is you would just, I would probably just stick it, you know, as long as you don't have like a bunch of huge gaps under your rubber, I would just put, you know, one piece of foam on the back like that and I would uh, trim it out as opposed to trimming out, you know, something that's really close, you know, you know, on your cling foam, sticking it on the back, and then cutting it out, you know, it out again. You know, you'll conserve a little bit of cling foam that way, but it's a little bit, you know, it creates extra work for you. So, anyways, but I know, you know, uh, you know, we have to conserve what we can, but uh, but that's, you know, that would be my method as far as trimming that goes. So, anyways, um, acrylic blocks, tack and peel, or cling foam mount, a good pair of scissors, you know. Do the turning with your off hand, and uh, I don't know. Uh, with these Kai scissors right here, we've used them in uh, you know for the manufacturing process, and like I said, I've had them sharpened several times, you know. But that's when we're cutting out, you know, hundreds of these little pieces, you know, in the production process. Uh, my guess is that uh, for you know personal usage, you might never have to uh, get these uh, types of scissors sharpened. You know, but it just depends on how many times you're using them and how you know how often. But uh, for the most part, I don't think you should have to worry about that. Scissors come in various sizes. A lot of people use the smaller ones. Um, I find the larger ones a little bit more comfortable, and I can get a longer cut. You know, as opposed to you know doing this type of method. But just use whatever's most most comfortable for you, and. Uh, you know, the temporary mounting system uh, will probably work for you uh, for a long time. Okay, thanks for watching.